All right, what's up, Dragon Brood? Today, we're gonna try to make the biggest tokens, well, the widest tokens and the biggest tokens that we can make. It'll make all more sense here in a little bit. Let's go take a look at the deck list. Before we hop into the cards, I'm gonna give a shout out to new channel member, Troy Graham. Thank you so much for being a supporter here on YouTube. Don't forget to use all your privileges that you get there being a member. Now, getting in the list, we're going to need to do some ramping. That's going to be one of the biggest parts here to get to our bigger creatures. So we're going to be doing some Azusa's mini journeys because, you know, getting to just play extra cards, extra lands, very good. We have four Llanowar Loam Speaker. Well, not four. We have three. But I feel like we might need four. We'll find out by the end of the video. But definitely Llanowar Loam Speaker because going from two to four is actually pretty good in this list. Because we're playing tokens, we're going to be playing Join the Dance, because it's the easiest way to get tokens, and it has Flashback, which is super sweet. Also, we're going to be playing some Adeline, because, eh, tokens. Wedding Announcement, also tokens. But to be fair, sometimes we actually use this to draw cards, and that's not bad at all. And Mondrak is going to let us copy all of our tokens. He's probably one of the most fun cards to play in token lists these days. We're going to try some Wandering Emperor, because we do need some removal for big problematic cards, and it does also make tokens, so that's nice. We're going to be playing some Invasion of Zendikar so we can get our proper lands to get to these big problematic things. Speaking of which, this is kind of one more card that costs four when you put it alongside Wandering Emperor and Mondrak, which is why we're trying to go from two to four. That being said, once we get our extra lands, we start unlocking our other cards and invoke the Ancients, which makes really big tokens. And we love to have extras of these with Mondrak out. And Titania's Command, which not only makes more tokens, but also can remove stuff from opponent's graveyard, get us extra life. Does quite a few different things, and since we're ramping up, we might as well play it. We're going to be playing some Nissa Ascendant Animus, because this is fantastic to ramp into and can just be a win condition. And then one of those big monsters we're going to play is Galta and Maverin. If we get to attack and we need to make a bunch of blockers for Mono Red, then we make a bunch of lifelinkers. If we're just trying to attack and finish the opponent, then hopefully there's a Mondrak out and we get some other big body four or five power creature to crush the opponent. And then we're also going to be playing some Awaken the Woods, because Awaken the Woods alongside Nissa. And it's kind of its own little fun combo, right? And that just can just end the game by itself. We also are going to take a look at a couple of other interesting cards here in Rabble Rousing because, well, if we can get a bunch of tokens and we get free stuff, and even getting to double those up with Mondrak out, we can kind of end the game fairly quickly. And we're going to take a look at Vorinclex because Vorinclex can also help us ramp and gives us the chance to maybe get a Galta and Maverin for free. So we'll see. But... As always, if you want to build this deck list or you want any of the cards you see here or any other nerd stuff, be sure to check out our sponsor over at CoolStuffInc.com because they always have cool stuff in stock and you can save 5% on your order by using code DRAGON at checkout. Additionally, if you want today's deck list, it'll be down in the description below or you can get it at the end of the video because we'll talk about where we finish based on what we learned because I'm sure this is going to be a wild ride. But it'll take you to our Moxfield link where you can not only see today's deck, but you can see all of our other decks we have from the rest of the season. But for now, y'all go enjoy those games. And hopefully, we'll have some good news at the back end of the video. Okay, we'll keep it. No clue if this loam speaker is going to live, but we're going to hope. I mean, maybe. They're playing something that needs the seed core, or at least can use it. Let's see what's up. Alright, so this is what we're doing. Fair enough. Doesn't have death touch, so that's some good news. Um, though I kind of want to do this and just have another blocker. I don't necessarily want to go shields down to play Invasion of Zendikar right now. Sure, that's fine. We could live with that. Okay. Now we can make three one ones. If we want to do that. Uh, let's do this. And if they exile something else, we'll live with it. Pass the turn. I mean, if they kill this and we take two poison, eh, such is life. Cost of doing business. Alright. Sure, we got it. Alright, they're down to three cards. This doesn't feel as bad now. That's pretty cute. We kill that, get that back, gets us another creature. I, I'm kind of digging it. Let's do that. Not what I was expecting to do here. But, you know, I'll take it. Alright. 
And then next turn we can try to just set up for a win, right? Nope, they're just going to kill our Nyssa. Or are they just reading her? Oh, that makes another one, right? Oh, no, give something flying. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. All right, so we go to three poison. Oh, no, they're going to try to take out Nyssa. Okay, fair enough. That makes sense. Ooh, that's a good card, though. One, two, four, five, six, seven. We have eight. Can't really do much here other than this. I say other than. Like, this is actually really good. Uh, go with Reach. Reach? This is not an artifact creature, though Skrelv is an artifact creature, so let's kill a Skrelv. Uh, alright. Let's pass. That seems alright. So now, at least if they want to kill Nyssa, it looks like they're going to have to sacrifice a creature to do so. If not two of them. Alright, so they didn't even attack. Alright, we kind of got what we wanted out of that exchange. So that's very good. Plus one. One, two, three, four, five. This needs... How much needs? Eight. So we could play Vorinclex and then get one shot before... You know what? I'm going to try to do this all at once. Let's go two, four, five, six. All right. Opponent just says that's enough. Uh, Let's keep this. I don't know why I hesitated. I'm not going to do anything else with this hand. I mean, it kind of... If we draw a land, it takes care of itself, so we'll see. But so far, that is not the case. And even then, we kind of need it to be an untapped land. Though even if it's not, we have a wedding announcement, so... Eh, we have choices. Alright, they opted to not do anything, and we did not find our land, which is very disappointing. But fortunately, they don't seem to have a way to get rid of enchantments right now. And if we can get an untapped land, I'm pretty sure our invasion of Zendikar is going to get through fine. Alright, you need a third path. Oh, so we're playing. This is one of those silly control decks. Okay, that's going to be a long game, y'all. Strap yourselves in. We're going to be at this for a minute. And on top of that, we're not drawing land, so it's not helping our cause any. Alright, you gotta go for the throat. Sounds good. Hey, we found a land. Uh, I'm just gonna attack with one, just to get the other token, because I think that has more value over a couple of turns. Also, it could have a situation where the opponent just uh, sweeps the board. I know you're probably thinking, like, I could have done that and attacked first into the invasion, but I actually don't want to. Kind of uh, just keeping the opponent from getting extra value. Like, we'd rather flip this later in the game. Where we can get more for our money. Because if they sweep the board a couple times, then we can attack that and have an extra 4-4 body. Alright. Soren, you doth have... Oh, do they have a cut down here? They do. Yep, looks like they do have a cut down. So, what do we want this play to look like? If we Galta, we attack both at Soren. We get extra bodies, and then we can maybe try to play Vorinclex and do something the following turn. Probably the best plan of action. So let's... Oh, no, 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 no. I meant to play Galta first. Oh, I messed up, y'all. I messed up. I meant to play Galta first there. Ah, that sucks. Yeah, because I know they have a cut down. Like, that was that was just bad. Like, you obviously have a cut down, right? Oh, well, March. Okay, same difference. Like, it does a thing. 
All right. Not really what we want, but I goofed up. I just misclicked. So I deserve everything that happens here. Could have had Soren dead. Well, maybe not. Would have been the same situation, but I would have had Galta and two more bodies. Which is pretty important. All right. Looking for an answer to kill Soren? Or, I mean, Vornclex. They did find a land, but I think they already played a land. So there's that. Now the question is, do you have a Wandering Emperor? Uh, I will block, because we have the secret reach. Opponent says, oops. Forgot that Vorinclex is real tall. All right. So what does this mean for the opponent? All right. I mean, I guess we got to try. If you, if you got the Wandering Emperor, I guess you got it. I mean, I'm not going to do anything about it. Okay, they didn't have it. Then we're going to try to activate. Ooh. Well, that went uh, smoother than expected. Sadly, we only got the smallest possible creature, so that wasn't super exciting. We lost our Azusa's Many Journeys, which is fine. Didn't really want that. Did lose an Invoke. And a Nissa, which is a little bit of a pain, but not the worst thing. Interesting. So... I think we still do this. Play this. I mean, I guess I'll attack with the creature land just because it'll be bigger. So it just forces the block, I guess. Uh, we'll make a bigger body here, I suppose. There we go. So at least get her out of the way. Oh, that's so random because it can't ever flip over. That's funny. That's an amusing token to copy. Or at least card to turn into a token. That is a really weird interaction, but that is definitely the way it works. Okay. Kaya does some weird things. Hey, farewell. We saw that coming, so... Here we go. Let's go big. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Looks good. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you got another, let's see it. Since it's pausing, I'm assuming there's something else there that's not a farewell. Unless they just had two of them and they were sitting on them. Nope, they give up. Well, you know, let's see what we can do with this. Not the greatest, but we can we can make this work. Ooh, would have liked for that to have been a green land, but you know we're gonna try. The chance this is just dead. Actually, probably every possible way it's just dead. <laughs> oh, actually, the opponent did not kill it. That's uh, interesting. All right, I mean we'll gamble. I mean, I sort of feel like if they just have uh, Brotherhood's End or something, meh, so be it. If not, maybe we get lucky, draw a land, we get to play Galta. Though it's been pausing, so maybe they do have, like, a creature removal spell and they're just choosing not to play it. Alright, not quite the same, but not bad. I mean, we could play Galta here, but I don't think we necessarily want to. I think we're going to do this because we get two bodies that are just bigger. So I'm going to go with uh, Vigilance, Vigilance. Not sure what we're concerned about just yet. But if there are creature removal spells, we are about to see them. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 
What you got, opponent? Okay, that's the least threatening thing we could see, so that's great. Love to see that. That's exciting. Yep, go for a throw. Totally fine. Alright, we're gonna rock with this. Gonna go ahead and play this. And we're gonna attack four. Alright. In the turn. Next turn. If Mondrak lives, we get to do some big things with Galta. Oh, we're gonna get to do some big things with Galta. I mean, I say that. We're gonna make like two four fours that are attacking, so it's not like the greatest thing. It's a nice thing though. Uh we draw. Or we can just make piles of little dudes here. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'd leave one that we could sack creatures with. Uh, I think we're probably okay with that. Just like double checking. We attack, we're gonna get two four fours. Yeah, all right, we're into it, let's go. You and you, attacking the opponent. Let's make a big body. So we got piles of damage. I mean, this is the combo you want to hit, for sure. All right, we're going to go ahead and do this. Get, I don't even think the color matters here. We're going to activate this. <laughs> going to take four, because we kind of have to. And we're going to sack these little duders, I think. We don't need the mana that much at this stage. If the opponent sweeps the board, they're just going to get us. So, uh, yeah. These can go away. Alright. Opponent's at 11. We have some blockers. I mean, they could kill Galta... Attack us for seven, but then they would die. They could play burn down the house, but then we just kill them with Galtas, most likely. Oh, actually, Modrak wouldn't even die either. Yeah, I don't know what they would have here, but it has to be something good, whatever it is. Chandra? Okay. Uh, Chandra doesn't cut it, though. You get to kill two four four or two four power things. Galta is still gonna have Galta and Maverin are gonna have some uh, trample damage. Plus Mondrick's gonna have to be blocked, and we're still gonna make two four fours when we attack. So yeah, I think we're good. Our two best things they can't kill right now. Actually, that's not true. Depends on what they have. Okay, so we could have added mana and made a sack some things. Yeah, Mondrax indestructible opponent. Yep. Well, that was kind of it. Let's uh, just activate and just make sure we get enough damage in. I guess that's fine. And then we attack with everybody. Making more dudes. Attacking the opponent. That's everything. Okay, that was good. I, that's what we want to see. Alright, let's do it. Not the fastest hand, but also not terrible. Okay. Probably because they've shown us black and white there. I may go with the zoos as many journeys here. Nope, they're going to counter it. Oh, because they had negate. Eh, fair enough. Alright. Just have to take our time and be patient. Could just be some type of Esper control deck. Who knows? I mean, this is just going to get a kill spell. Oh. Okay, so this makes me feel like there's not a kill spell. Because otherwise, why would you count it? You'd save that for something better. Huh. Okay. Now I feel like we're doing some things. 
Uh, let's go ahead and play this and play this while the opponent's tapped. I mean, sort of feels like a why not sort of thing. All right, they're going to go Union of the Third Path again. Gaining a bunch of life, so we have a long, long road to go there. All right, maybe that's how they're planning to kill us. I don't know. We're going to attack. And we'll just play these. Question is, is it farewell? All right, we got another poison. And another poison. All right, we're already up to three. I guess we just plus another one. Strike fast and strike hard. I, mean, I guess we go with this, right? Plus everything. I don't know if we need to remove the opponent's graveyard, so I'm just gonna plus everything and. Yeah, I probably am going to do that, actually. Mostly because, like, making two twos, I feel like if there's, like, a sunfall or anything else, it just ends up being pretty bad. Even if it's, like, a farewell. I'd rather just get some extra value out of the card. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Well, I depopulate. That, too. All right, you got it. Uh, let's test the waters, I guess. Is there another just simple removal card? Yep, there was. I guess knowing they had that, I probably should have tried join the dance first, but yeah, it's whatever. Because I probably could have got away with it later. Ugh, that's terrible. Can I counter that? Sure, it gets negated. Alright, need to find something good here. Probably something like, uh... Eh, not you. I was thinking more like Borenklax or something would have probably been better. Alright, we'll just pass. Oh my gosh. All right, GG's. <laughs> yep, you turn it into a seven, attack us to seven. I mean, I guess I could make something with a couple of blockers. I could get my thing that makes four fives or something. So like, it's not quite over, but it's basically over if they have any quality card here. I also have to not draw a blank, which that's probably the next best thing we could have drawn. Unless they have yet another counter. All right, they're gonna go digging, I guess. I'm going to make Vigilance Vigilance so that we could block and attack. All right. We've gone through a lot. of we got their Vraska's Falls. So, I mean, they might depopulate again or something here. And I wouldn't blame them. It'd be a good play. Yep, there's a Farewell. That makes sense. All right. There's a Galta. Well, okay. <laughs> Need to hit again. Probably Wandering Emperor or something here. Nah, like... Yeah, that wasn't it. I was going to say... A uh, few things would have been good, but those are not it. Alright. This should do it. Alright. Almost said matter what that is. Yep. All right. GG's. I think I'm going to keep it. Mostly because I'm leaning on the Wandering Emperor here. But if this is a matchup where Wandering Emperor doesn't do anything, we're probably in bad shape. Would be nice to draw one of our two mana things here, though, if we can get our hands on one. Or one or more non-token creatures die. Okay. Well, we have a lot of token creatures, so they may not be getting a lot of zombies. I see what they're doing, though, and I can respect it. 
but we're just going to give you some token creatures. So I assume they're playing a lot of removal. I'm not sure if that means they have their own Wandering Emperor here, which would make sense. So let's find out. Let's test the Wadas. Nope, just a cut down. Okay, we can definitely live with that. Um, can't really cast anything else here except for Wandering Emperor, and it's not really worth it, so... We'll just let it ride. Soren, you got it. Alright. Alright, so here's what we're going to do here. We're going to play this. Make a dude now. Play this plus this. Go after Soren with the assumption that they're going to block. And then we either get to play Invoke the Ancients. Or we Nissa to... I think we just Nissa here. I think that's better value. And we just say, you know what? Get rid of this. And then anything else you do, you just do. If they sweep the board or do any other stuff, that's totally fine. Shooter's Edict, sure. We have to sacrifice a Planeswalker. That's going to be an easy decision. Yep. <laughs> Got it. Ooh, easy mulligan. Keep this. Probably has to be Mondrak, sadly. Much as I would like to get that into play at some point during this video, now is not the time. All right, you got a vampire socialite. We're going to play a couple of these duders. I mean, I assume we double block. They shoot one of these so we can't block. Nope, we just get to trade. That is awesome. We are all about that exchange. That is great. Honestly, not even joking, way more value than I thought we were going to get out of that exchange. That is great. I don't think we end up coming out significantly ahead by playing the Azusa here, other than we could play Join the Dance next turn. But I'm going to go with this. I think we start on this train to get the extra value. All right. So this looks like they're just straight up playing, well, I was going to say vampires, but here's a whole other thing, so maybe not. Uh, let's see. Whenever it dies, return to the battlefield under your control, attached to a creature or planeswalker. All right, cool. You got it. Damage in. Ooh, discarding Olivia. Nice. Well, now I'm a little interested in a rabble rousing, so let's go with this. And we'll do this. And we'll. This can't block. Uh, no attacks. I guess I could have waited and just done rabble rousing next turn anyway, but this is fine. Because I could have just invasion this turn and then rabble rousing next turn. That probably would have been better use of my resources. Uh, you know what? I'm going to take five. Because I'm going to gain three back anyway. Oh, well, that's special at some point later. Let's... Ooh. Yeah, get this. No attacks. All right. We're going to take some big hit here. And then we're going to try to go ham next turn. Strangle can't block. When it enchant a creature or Planeswalker opponent controls with any of your upkeep, Strangle sacrifices a non-land permanent. Then that player loses one life. Alright, that seems fine. I'll just take two. It doesn't feel like much of a loss there. That's okay. 
especially considering there's a chance we could start making tokens and do a bunch of silly stuff. So, like, yeah, I'm, I'm in. Fatal Grudge. So then we sack a thing? Sacrifice a creature? Is that what that is? Sacrifice a non-land permanent. Yeah, sure, I'll just sack that. That's why that card's just not that good. I see so many people trying to play it, and it's just like... It's like a super slow removal card. Which, I guess, is mostly fine, but like, uh. Alright, not sure what the opponent's plan here is doing all of that. But I don't hate it. We're at 13. You know what? We're just going to start putting pressure on the opponent. Say, like, if you got something, you got something. We go to 9, 7, hmm, maybe we don't. Yeah, we do. We're gambling. Alright, no attacks. This is it. Opponent can set up to try to run our life total down. We're only at 9. But we're about to start attacking with things. Alright, you sack it. You got it. And during their upkeep. Alright, sure. We're at 7. Alright, so we're technically at 2. Actually, no, we're dead now, actually. Because they can just start sacking those. Alright. We took a gamble and didn't pay off. We're dead. Because we can't do enough here. Can't get the Wandering Emperor into play. Yep. Best we could do is play this. That gets us two bodies. We have one, two, three, four, five. This gets us a six, seven, eight, nine. We're going to be one short if we attacked with everything. Uh, is there anything else we could do? If we played this... Oh, actually, if we play... No, no, no. Hold on. If we play Mondrak... That's four. We get five, six. This will get a seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right. I mean, we have to exile one of our own things. But we're not dead. <laughs> I mean, like, it's not great. But we're far from dead. So, you know, we do what we got to do, I guess. Make another big body. Attack with everything, because that's all we can do. Play this. All right, continue. I mean, we're only attacking for 11, unfortunately. We also can't protect Mondrak here because we don't have the life. <gasps> Opponent's blocking there? What? You can't be blocking their opponent. Really? Really? Uh, sure? That is the best possible situation for us. Strike fast and, strike hard. and now we can actually save Mondrak if something were to happen. Yeah, opponent said oops. Alright, well we'll see if we die, because I wasn't able to... I mean, that saved us four life either way. I think this is where we just let... I mean, I guess we could have used Nissa to get rid of one of these two. That was another option. So, I guess I had a few outs there. Uh, we'll just lose Nissa here. I don't think it's worth the risk. Alright. Oh, they found another one. Alright, GG's. Oh, wait, no. They don't have the mana. They can only sack one of them. Yeah, we go to three. We go down to one. But the opponent goes to 19, blocks our two fives, 12, 13, 14. Yeah. Wow. Wow. But as it turns out, had we gained the extra mana, they wouldn't have had another one to kill us. They'd, we'd have been at two. Because they would have had to... Yeah, they just wouldn't have had the mana because they would have played that this turn. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we got a little lucky anyway. It kind of didn't matter, but still, that is a very close game. Yeah, we just attack with everything. That is crazy. All 
All right. Wow. Wow, that is a wild game. Cool stuff, though. All right, let's keep it. Let's see where this goes. We did get a fourth land, so that's not a bad thing here. Go ahead and play this. Get to play a bonus land. All right. A bit of reunion. Good news is we do have a Titania's command, so we can get rid of some stuff from their yard if it shows up there. I mean, at some point, obviously can't do it yet. Go ahead and play this into this. And then all of our options become open. Probably need to go get forest for us. All right. Maybe we can do some things. Shieldred. That is definitely a nuisance. But possibly one we can still deal with. I only have six mana. We can't quite do it for seven, so we don't like that. But we could do this and this, and that works. All right. And we do have this as a backup plan to get some life, so it's not the worst thing. Though they probably have some removal cards here. Gonna make us discard? Sure. Probably Nissa, I imagine, or else they just lose the uh, Cruelty of Gix. Oh, this is fun. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, let's do this. One, two, three, four? And send one, two, three... Hmm. Hmm. How do I want to do this? Because I kind of want to flip this. I guess we have to send everything here, right? Nah, that's silly. Let's send this here. Let's send these two here. And if they want to block something, cool. Oh, that has to come in attacking an opponent or a planeswalker. Doesn't come in attacking otherwise. Interesting. That makes me feel like they just have another shieldred. <laughs> really what that setup was about. I mean, they can go get anything that sweeps creatures. I mean, they can go get a burn down the house really here is more than reasonable I would totally understand if that's what they snagged here okay brotherhood's in not the burn down the house I thought it was gonna be so that's not awful I guess uh you do get to get stuff out of the graveyard I mean I guess technically I have stuff too but you can only get a creature, right? Well, I guess I have an Adeline they could get, but... Alright. Guess we gotta do this. Exile target player's graveyard. And, uh, make two bears? Not my favorite use of that card, but, eh, you know. Might as well play that. All right. Yeah, that's the best thing to get. So we didn't leave them with many options. All right, you got a shakedown heavy. And a Glissa. Glissa is going to be super annoying here. Um, hmm. How do you want to go about this? We kind of don't have good attacks, unfortunately. I mean, we could attack with... Uh, we really just have to wait till next turn. That sucks. Alright. Best turn. 
All right, there's a fight rigging. And this is probably where they get a... Uh, what's her name? Big Atraxa. Uh, Titan. Okay, Titan's rough, but still feel like that could leave us in a somewhat winnable position. So we're, we're not that concerned about a Titan right now. Uh, decline. We'll just take the hit once. It's fine. Black here. Alright. Ooh, I was just thinking Wandering Emperor would have been pretty slick to get a double lifelink, or a first strike to be able to have first strikers fight first strikers. That would have been pretty good. But now the other option is, can we just get our other uh, Titania's command and just go super big? All right, they got a tally. They're good. GG's. Don't even really need to see what's going on. We're, we're dead. Yep. I mean, I guess. Like, do they have anything else? They got to invoke the ancient. Yeah, we're not going to be able to punch through now. All right. Good deal. Well, that's a pretty terrible hand. This is a little better. Uh, we'll keep this. Who? what are we going to get rid of here? Probably Azusa, because we don't have extra land. I mean, unless we were to draw land, land. That card really doesn't do anything here. Yep, you got it. I mean, as I say that, we draw a land and another land, but realistically, we need to be playing these as blockers against Mono Red anyway on two, and then playing this on three, so it's probably not going to make much of a difference, all things considered. But it is what it is. If we get another white land, we at least have access to Wandering Emperor, and that could be helpful. Kind of just have to see what's up. Alright, Squee, you doth have. We'll be double blocking Squee. Because that makes the most sense. Come on, untapped white land. That's what we're aiming for here. Alright, that'll at least get us through next turn. And we'll just have to figure out what to do after that. But it's at least a start. And then we need another green land for the following turn to be able to play Invoke the Ancients. So we're asking for a lot of things here, but they can happen. Now, if we don't get the other green for Invoke the Ancients, we could also just play Mondrak, and that would be getting the third token on that turn, and possibly another one from the Wandering Emperor. So, actually, that's not true. I'm probably just going to make one the following turn anyway. All right, you got it. We take some extra damage here. Seems reasonable. Ooh, it was a pain land, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers, I guess. Alright. Let's see what we got. We could also get these with reach, so we can block the phoenixes. Phoeni? Phoenixes, plural? Uh, that's a little bit annoying. Are we just dead? Because they have... Well, not true. Because we gained some life here, right? So let's exile this. Because we don't want to give them any cards under the circumstances. We definitely want to block here. Alright. Route 5. Ugh, if we go to 4, Lightning Strike can eat our lunch. But if we don't, we die to the Phoenixes anyway. So that's kind of a tough spot. Alright. Well, we might just be dead skis. Go with Reach twice. Uh, do we just make a body? I mean, we kind of... Well, we don't... Hmm. We are getting a 1-1 one, one token. And if they have burn, they're better off just throwing it at our head right now. Alright. I'm gonna gamble. Just so we can have a chance to gain two more life if we're not dead this turn. But there's a good chance we're just dead. I mean, if they have a lightning strike, we just die. And I don't know what their hand could be. At this point, unless they're waiting to play, like, Thundering Raijus or something. Alright, so they're going to strangle that. That makes sense. Okay. Fair enough. We need to find another way to gain life, or this is not going to last very long. 
Need another Wandering Emperor. All right. Okay, here's something. And, and you trample, so... All right. That's a thing. I don't even think we can afford to attack, though, because if they get another, say, Swiss Spear with any kind of spell, we'd be dead. Block, block, two, three, maybe not. And let's wait a turn. I mean, all they're waiting to do is draw a Lightning Strike. Truthfully. I mean, if it's a Raiju, we're not that worried. Well, that's not true. Raiju does put us to two, and then we died even more things. So this, this is tough. Ooh, they had a salvo. Good news, Vorinclex also has reach. He has the secret reach. So that's pretty strong here. But man, we need another life gainer. Like, right now. Even just our uh, Titania's will or whatever, or uh, uh, command, would be great. Alright, I mean, we're going to block the only way we can. Uh, they might have forgot that we had secret reach. Um, yeah, gonna go with this. Just double checking. See if I can find something good to put under there. That maybe we get. That's not it. Uh, attacking with just that. Making another body. And then hope that's enough. I mean, lightning strike, we die. <laughs> it's basically where we're at. They're going to play Squee again out of the yard? If they play Squee and attack with everything, then I think we're good. Unless they have, like, exactly... Oh, no, that's not true. They could have play with fire and we would die. Because one would get through for two... And then they just shoot us for the difference. All right, well, if that's our last card, we're about to find out. If so, they got us. Like, that was a bad attack by me. And if not, there's really nothing I can do about it. So, here we go. I guess if I'm going to do that, let's block here just in case. I mean, any, any burn spell just kills us, so it doesn't really matter. Like, if they got it, we're just dead. Okay, they didn't have it. So, was that it? Uh, sure. Alright, cool. I don't know how we survived that. <laughs> Alright, so after playing the games, there are some things that stood out a little bit. I think we have to have more two-mana things to help us ramp up. I think it'd be nice to even have another land, which would be good. Um... Vorinclex could probably be better if we had a couple more things to hit. Uh, it was good for ramping, but we really didn't have a lot there, so that was a little disappointing. But I do think we need to just be like full on Azusa, full on Loam Speaker. Even if they die, like we just have to take the chance, because going from two to four is actually really good. And I even think we need another Wandering Emperor, because some of the cards you can't beat are other Planeswalkers, or decks that are playing a lot of Planeswalkers, so you want more yourself. Additionally, stuff like um, Glissa is a little bit of a problem. Stuff like Obliterator is a problem. So just having more outs. Uh, that means Rabble Rousing doesn't really get played here. And sadly, probably have to... Man, Vorinclex, I don't necessarily want to cut it, but that may end up being the correct answer, which makes me very sad, honestly. And I don't know, like, Adeline was okay. We are making a lot of tokens. But I don't know how great she is. Especially since our plan is really to try to get Mondrax, Wandering Emperors, that whole thing into play. So, this, this, there's some tough decisions that have to be made here. And I don't know what the right answer is, y'all. Seriously. It might even be cut one join the dance. And just squeeze where we can. Like, cut a join the dance. Cut a Vorinclex. That gets us to 61. And that feels a little bit better. Like, not great in particular, but it does a little bit more. Puts us at five Planeswalkers, which is good. We can still use Galta with Mondrak. That's fine. I feel like maybe we need more Awake in the Woods. I would like to have three, but maybe two is all we can squeeze in. But yeah, this this is rough. Um, yeah, I think this is probably about as close as we can get, truthfully. But we've got four 
Azusa's Many Journeys, four Land of War Loam Speaker, three Join the Dance, two Adeline, four Wedding Announcement, three Mondrak, three Wandering Emperor, three Invasion of Zendikar, two Invoke the Ancients, two Titania's Command, two Nyssa Ascendant Animus, two Galta and Maverin, two Awaken the Woods. Lands, we have an Iganjo, five Plains of Beseju, six Forest, four each of Brushland, Overgrown Farmland, and Razor Verge Thicket. So yeah, I think there's a few cards that do, or even decks that pose a little bit of an issue to this. Like, I think playing against any of the mono white control type decks, mostly because of the uh, six mana wandering emperor that it can just like leave you with a token and get rid of your other stuff. So that kind of sucks. But you can usually play around the sweepers okay. You have some options if you're just kind of like pacing your cards out instead of going all in. I think that's a viable solution. So I'm not upset at this in those fights but it's going to be pretty hard to win if they hit that card otherwise like i said we're talking about stuff like obliterator and glissa like those are annoying because glissa can get rid of enchantments and even obliterator just being big but you could also just like block with two or three tokens give up some of your other tokens and maybe one or two lands and it's probably fine so there's a few ways to get around it or you can just try to go wide and attack all at once which is also a viable solution so we do have ways to get around it but they are going to be tough but outside of that like the deck was actually pretty fun but i think it actually takes more concentration and a little more practice to play well than a regular tokens deck just because there's so much value in your upper end cards but you have to decide when to deploy them based on the actions of the game and the game state so this is one that if you decide to build it and play it i would recommend putting some practice time in on the play queue before taking it to the ladder and after today's card spotlight we're going to talk about bearscape just because this card's actually pretty sweet at making tokens it allows you to remove stuff from the graveyard and make two two bears which would be fantastic in a deck like we had today because we don't get too many cards like that that just let you keep making tokens that i guess these days aren't black <laughs> now that i'm thinking about it black seems to be the color that gets that we don't really get that in other things which is probably good to stay within the color pie and all that fun stuff but it would be a very useful card in a deck like this that being said it's actually still a good card in commander situations and it did get a reprint last year i believe and brought the price down a bit you can find these for about four to five dollars and that's actually totally reasonable if you want to put one into your deck now if you enjoyed today's deck and you're looking for some more token shenanigans we do have a mardu list that you might want to check out and it plays quite a bit different than this one but that's all i have you for now we'll see you next time